been a journey of ups and downs, mm -hmm. meeting people who don't believe in me, first of all. Why did you, you know, not give up? Mm -hmm. I didn't have an option. I was afraid of giving up, and maybe I'm giving up on something that will work. So we have that in Aquarius State Plus. My students, they struggled. They really struggled, but they made it. But what I loved about those children yeah. is that they were very determined to stay with me to the end. No one dropped off. No one dropped off. A groundbreaking achievement in education is making headlines across the globe. Rose Tatawekesa, a teacher at St. Austin's Academy in Nairobi, Kenya, has captivated audiences by delivering a marathon science lesson of over 62 hours straight. Wekesa's tireless commitment to education has left the world in awe. Hello and welcome to Globe Traction. My name is Pasil Telewa and tonight we host Rose Wekesa who shares her motivation behind this monumental feat that might see her entered into the Guinness Book of Records for conducting the longest science lesson ever besides her personal backstory. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> nice meeting you finally. Thank you. Face to face. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. And you know why we are talking to each other right now. Mm -hmm. However, before we start, please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Tata Wekesa. I'm a teacher, a mother, a wife, and uh, a woman who is attempting great things. I, I can see it's a, a woman who is attempting great things. Mm -hmm. And just the other day, less than a week ago, mm -hmm. we are talking about the Guinness World Records. Yes. How did you think about attempting uh -huh. Guinness World Records for the longest science lesson okay. ever? Um, I used to, to see the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. I would even read it. I remember there's a time there used to be a show also. Yeah, they still run some, shows. Yeah. The shows are still there. Yes. So I thought Guinness World Records are for people who have uh, weird traits, like the longest nails, the biggest mouth, such things. <laughs> Yeah. Until I saw this lady in Nigeria cooking. And then yes. it got me thinking because... Hilda. Yes, Hilda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It got me thinking because I've always wanted to do something significant. Because me, I love greatness. I want to be a great person. So yeah. I knew for me to be great, I have to do something out of this world. And I have to place myself on a global market. So I, I just went to their website one, one time in June. And I started searching for the records, and I realized there is no record for longest science lesson. I'm a science teacher. I teach biology and chemistry. Yeah. So I applied. I applied. I paid whatever I needed to pay. And then in September, I got a rejection. Wait. How much did you pay? Some dollars. I think $45. Yeah. Yes. That is like the application fee. Yes. Yes. So what was the explanation for the rejection in November? Yeah, so they were saying that uh, that I don't know the area that I've applied in cannot be um, is is not the the record is not measurable, and they were saying that the area is not competitive. Yes. What I had saw, you What had you applied initially? I had applied to do the longest biology and chemistry lesson. So I replied to them and I asked them uh, why would they say that there's no competition in science. Yet life is science and everything we do is based on science. Yes. So I told them, according to me, their reasons for the rejection are not valid. Yes. And of course I knew, like, even if I tell them that, the worst they will do is to reject. To again. reject, yeah. Yeah, then, but at the end of, of my ranting, because it was like a ranting email, <laughs> a ranting <laughs> response. Yes. Because yeah, because I was yeah, how, how can you deny me a chance to do this? And you know how science is important. Medicine is based on science. Engineering is based everything, on science. Everything, almost everything even, is based uh, on science. Even, uh, what is it? Telecommunications. Even entertainment, because how do we run all these cameras and everything? That is physics. Yeah. You know, so um, I said, let me reply to these guys. Let, them give, let me give them a piece of my mind. I told them their reasons are not valid. And um, I would want to know what I should do so that I can get an you opportunity. You can attempt yes, yes, yes. a record, yeah. So that was in September. So a month later, I get an acceptance. 
But now they changed the title of the record yes. to longest science lesson. Also, yeah. perhaps they didn't want you to specify, to specify biology or chemistry. That's what I learned. Yeah, yes. they just wanted you to talk about the longest yes. science teacher. Yes. Amazing. And then you started. How did you now begin? Mm -hmm. You know your journey from mm -hmm. now them giving you. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you attempt the longest science teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when did you start the preparation for that? So as soon as I got uh, the acceptance, I remember it was on a Thursday evening, on 31st October. Ooh. I remember the details, I even remember the date I applied, it was 13th June. Ooh. So yeah, that's go. how dear this, <laughs> this was to me. Yeah. Um, the first thing you should do once you get an acceptance, okay, first of all, you should not announce to the public that you're intending to do a Guinness World Record. If because they have there's going to be a competitor. Yes, yeah. if they have not sent you an official acceptance, so you have to keep quiet until you get that email that I got on, on 31st October. Mm -hmm. So when you get that email, you are allowed now even to hold a press conference and say that you have received acceptance to do this and that. Yeah. So that's what I did. I screenshot the, because you know Kenyans love evidence. I screenshot the, the email yeah. and I posted on my social media and my journey of planning this thing began. It's been a journey of ups and downs, mm -hmm. meeting people who don't believe in me, first of all. And wondering why the heck you're yes. even talking about that. Yes, yes. Yeah. And even what? the other day after I did it, somebody posted on Facebook and said, uh, posted my photo and, you know, the, the hours I did. And they said, uh, she said, I don't know why we didn't believe in her when she said she wanted to do it. Does because it, does it uh, actually, I think I'm going to come to mm -hmm, that later mm -hmm. because I know they're going to be those kind of people, mm -hmm. you know, at some point, wherever yeah. you go in life. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the preparation. Mm -hmm. What strings did you have to pull to mm -hmm. make sure that your Guinness World Record mm -hmm. attempt mm -hmm. is successful? Because mm -hmm. you alone cannot do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's a lot of, you know, yes. people involved. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you have to do? Uh, the first thing I made sure is that I had the support, support of my spouse. Because according to me, trying to do such a thing without family support can be very tough. So you, you, you had to tell Victor, Victor, come here. You know there is something yes. I'm attempting here. Yeah, he, yeah. Knew, he knew the process. Yeah. When I applied, I, I told him. When I got the rejection, I told him. And when I got the acceptance, I told him. So he has always been excited How did he about. Feel he when he, he got has the been acceptance? very excited. Yeah. Like, well, he never thought that someone can, you know, do that so it was something also new to him and mm -hmm. he was excited he wanted to see what will come out of it yeah so that was the first thing i did the second thing i did i brought in a few people uh, and formed a committee people that i was almost sure they would stand with me to the end yes yeah. yeah so then i kept on doing a lot of social media posts i wrote emails let me tell you mm -hmm. i wrote if i would if i was to get replies from all the people i requested to support me I think it would have been bigger than it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I wrote so many emails requesting for, for support, started going for meetings, looking for funds, because the event was over 2 million shillings. It was 2 point, Karibu 3 million. The budget. Yeah, the budget, yeah, yeah, yeah. because you, you must have made a medical services team there throughout. So yeah. when so now that we are getting to the nitty gritties mm -hmm. of everything, mm -hmm. behind the scenes, mm -hmm. I call them, mm -hmm. uh, we are speaking about you prepping for the big day mm -hmm. have you now chosen the dates that mm -hmm. you're gonna have this big day done mm -hmm. and what is it that you need to prep mm -hmm. before the big day you know mm -hmm. in terms of just you as an individual the mm -hmm. team that will be you know in your class because you need students mm -hmm. and i think the record was talking of you don't need to have less than 15 students right less than 10 less than 10 yes. at a go yes yeah so we are talking of having making sure you have students that are in and they're not dropping off mm -hmm. at least 10 every moment yes yeah. And what about the staff to provide mm -hmm. food? What about the snacks? Mm -hmm. What about the medical services? Mm -hmm. Fill me in because I'm super curious. Mm -hmm. I want to know how you killed it. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, we needed branding. Yes. Uh, I knew that I want this to go on air. Uh, I have a YouTube channel that uh, aired this throughout. In fact, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can watch from the time we hit the start button to, the, yeah. to when we hit the stop button. Yes. We had continuous live streaming. So I knew that uh, I want the videos to look nice. So I wanted my students to be dressed in a particular way. I wanted them to wear t-shirts like what I'm wearing yeah. now. Uh, I wanted them to wear hoodies at night because I was trying to imagine when it it's cold at cold. night, yeah. they'll come with all sorts of jackets. 
So it was really my desire to have a branded event. I knew it was going to be expensive, but I wrote it there down on the budget. Mm -hmm. Then food, I needed to feed them very well because this was not an endurance uh, to stay hungry. So I needed them to eat almost after every four hours. We were doing the three main meals and three main snacks. So one way that I was able to meet that budget was by negotiating, negotiating with the vendors until CPF came and funded all the, all the branding. Wow. Yes. Besides the branding, mm -hmm. did you get any other support? I got support from Mike Sonko, yes. from Sonko Rescue Team. Yeah. He funded us financially. We were able to, to, to pay for food. We were able to pay for, we were able to buy some teaching and learning resources. Mm -hmm. I also got another friend who does not like being mentioned, mentioned. who gave me money to buy stationery. Yes. Specifically stationery. Mm -hmm. I needed a lot of stationery. Now let Did me mention uh, Semastea. Yes. Semastea is a center for mathematics and science and technology education in Africa. Yeah. They came in the last week, the last minute, and they really supported us, especially with specimen, lab apparatus, mm -hmm. uh, some of the chemicals we were using, and they gave us their lab technicians. The reagents? The reagents, wow. yes. Yeah. They gave us reagents, uh, they gave us the, 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 the fresh specimen like we were dissecting a heart i don't know if you saw yes we dissected a kidney yeah we were able to dissect a fish so um they came in like i mean they came in at the last minute i always, and always they feel did like bomb they yeah that was god's way of just sorting me out the last yeah time. and and i think there's something about you believing in yourself mm. which you know gets me to to wonder mm -hmm. why did you you know not give up mm -hmm. for instance while you're going for all of this I didn't have an option. I was afraid of giving up, and maybe I'm giving up on something that will work. I'm so happy I didn't give up. If I'd given up, I, I don't think I would forgive myself. So we have that in aqueous state plus, magnesium hydroxide in aqueous state as well. Aqueous means what? There's something about women, mm -hmm. math and sciences. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've really, you know, painted sort of a really positive mm -hmm. picture mm -hmm. when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. And you had me laugh about it prior mm -hmm. to us sitting down mm -hmm. about, you know, I know you and I've been interested in you. Mm -hmm. And that is the bit that I'm really impressed about you. Mm -hmm. How was it for you growing up and how did you even find yourself pursuing math, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, pursuing sciences mm -hmm. as a lady? Uh, I used to do very well academically being raised by a teacher my dad didn't give me options it was about education in the morning and in the evening yeah uh he showed me you know nowadays the way we are raising children it's like we are showing them there are other options you can be an influencer you can do tiktok and get followers and get money we are trying to show them like there are options but yeah. for me my dad didn't show me other options so um and I remember one time he sat me down and told me, if you don't get a grade to go to the university, I don't have money to take you to, to those private institutions. institutions. Yeah. So you'll just go to the local center here, learn how to plate hair, and uh, get married and go Get whatever. married in this village. Yeah. Then we will be seeing each other when you're still around. So, eh, that one. That is it a tough teacher, me. you know. Yeah. Yeah. It awakened me. I knew, first of all, I knew I don't want to end up in that village, especially with a boy from that village. So, <laughs> Which village was that? <laughs> <laughs> Where? Uh -huh. Nakuru. Uh -huh. Nakuru Kabazi. Yes. Not Kabazi that there was, was anything scared. wrong with the boy there. I know, there, but I know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Tu, nataka tu, you you wants to explore the world. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and you know, these are boys who, who were with in primary school. So, in my head, I was thinking, eh, okay. Mijipate. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he didn't give me options. Then uh, the love for teaching has been in me since I was a young girl. Sometimes I would even pretend I'm, I'm teaching the cows. When I arrived in school when I was in class one, I would mm. take a stick and then take my, uh, my classmates through all the charts in the class. The mathematics charts, the science charts, mm -hmm. the English charts. Yeah. I just loved imparting knowledge. Yeah. From Bahati girls, you told yes. me you're in Bahati. Yes, yes. How were your grades? They were good. And I got an A minus in, 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 in from four. Congratulations. What yes. did you think of pursuing? I was thinking I should do medicine. Yes. Okay. 
even when I was working hard, I mm-hmm. thought, uh, let me work hard so that I do medicine. But that doing medicine was because people were telling me, become a doctor, become a doctor. But what I loved was being a teacher. A teacher. Yeah, so when yeah. I had a bad experience in a hospital. What bad experience was that? We took my dad in hospital on a Thursday night mm-hmm. at 1 a.m. after he had collapsed in the house. I'm sorry. And he was not touched by any doctor until Saturday 8 p.m. What happened? Was that the is what... hospital on strike or something? No. It's just... What was the problem? I don't know. And I decided, because I'm not this kind of person, I don't want to be in such institutions. I'm seeing somebody's father oh, on a sorry, bed and yeah. I'm not attending to them. Yet I am a doctor who has been trained for that purpose. I felt that was very inhuman. And I, it, it put me off, let me say. So you are like, even if people are talking about being a doctor, I don't yeah, want to yeah. be a doctor I didn't anymore. want to be, yeah. become a doctor. So when the time came to choose courses, by the way, uh, passing, yeah. I had very good grades. If I show you those I know, grades, you I know you're telling me of an M minus. It's only, it's only your, Swahili that I got yeah. a B. Now I would have been your Swahili teacher because I'm the Swahili ah, one. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. but besides that, mm-hmm. you've always been a smart kid. And I'm thinking of you now getting to becoming a teacher. Mm-hmm. And you still want to, I mean, you're getting into the university and you still want to pursue, you know, mm. these sciences. Yeah. Why did you stick around? I stuck around sciences because I knew those who want to become doctors have to do biology and chemistry. So I decided because I've, 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 I've made a decision not to become a doctor, I'll be a teacher of people who want to become doctors. So that's how yeah. I ended up choosing biology and chemistry. So I felt like in the process of teaching them biology and chemistry, I'll be able to teach them other skills and other values that will make them not behave like the doctors who mishandled my father. So I felt I'll make an impact in their minds and in their mindset mm-hmm. as a teacher more than the impact I would make as a doctor. So as a doctor, I would have made money, but I would not have made yeah. impact. Yes, I so see. I chose impact over money. That is so. Yeah. That is so different, you know. Yeah. Hearing it from a younger person like mm. you, because mm. I think also the world right now, yeah. you know, has people with lots of mindset mm. drawn towards, you know, the financial, you know, yes. achievements, yes. and also there is the perception in in Kenya about, mm. you know, being kikuyu, mm-hmm. and you know, the love for the, you know, finances mm. yes. and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a really good thing to hear that. People just have assumptions, yeah. and assumptions are not reality. Mm. But away from that, mm-hmm. you also have family, Rose. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So this is a teacher mm-hmm. who is attempting Guinness World Record, mm-hmm. and people are seeing you as this young girl. However, mm-hmm. you have stuff going on. So mm. tell me about your family and everything. Yeah, I'm married uh, 11 years now to Pastor Victor Wekesa. Yes. And we have three beautiful daughters. Victoria Zuri is nine years old. Vanessa Zoe is seven years old and Valerie Olive is three years old. Those are my babies. Those are your babies. Yes. When you're not being so serious in sciences, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you're taking care of them. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how has it been for you? This is a silly question mm-hmm. because I <laughs> tend to, to mm-hmm. tell people, mm-hmm. can you stop asking women about this? Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, this is a science girl. Mm-hmm. She's also a wife. She's also a mother. Mm-hmm. How is she managing to balance? Balancing is not easy. There are many times I get overwhelmed. Especially when uh, when now, <laughs> towards the end of last year, yeah. I knew I even have to have two helpers at home. Yeah, because I knew January and February will be crazy. Because yeah. having three children and you have one helper in the house, it means you have to come from work and get home and continue with some work. Yes. Because the kids need to do homework. Uh, we need to cook, they need to eat, they, they need, need to go yeah, to bed, yeah, take there's, shower. There's a lot of work. Yeah. There's ironing to be done, laundry to be done, basically. I mean, one person cannot manage this house and the children. Yeah. So I now have two helpers. I've had to keep two helpers so that I am free. So one helper is, de- is uh, designated to the children and their affairs. And then the other one does uh, cleaning and the other work. Yeah. What challenges did you face while going through all of these experiences? Rejection. Yeah. I've learned how to handle rejection. I've learned 
I've seen people who do not believe in me and then they show up the last day. They show up. No embarrassment. They None. showing up. Yeah. None. Yeah. Yeah. And, at the, and, and still, that's just the negative I've seen. The positive, I've seen strangers believe in me. Cheers to strangers <laughs> believing in you. <laughs> Cheers. So there is, there, is, there is something in the book mm -hmm. of the Bible that mm -hmm. talks about a prophet being rejected in their own hometown. Yes. Mm -hmm. So did you relate a lot to that scripture? Now that your husband is a pastor. I'm yes. mentioning that because yes, I know Victor yes. is a pastor. Uh -huh. did, you ex did you experience and relate to that scripture? I did. And, but the scripture I related to the most yes. is uh, Jeremiah 17 from verse 5 to verse 8. What does it say? It says that cursed is the man who sets his eyes on another man, whose hope is in another man. But blessed is he who trusts in the Lord, because he will be like a tree planted by the riverside that bears fruit in and out of season. And never withers. And never withers. Yeah. I also remember... Uh, the Lord telling the, the Israelites to be still and know that he is Lord. If I tell you that by the time we were entering 2024, I didn't even have one sponsor, you will not believe it. And other people thought I'm doing this for money. I want to say before the whole world, I did not do this for money. If I was doing it for money, this is not what people do for money. There are other things I would have done for money. I did this so that I can get a name in science then once that name comes, I can make the impact I want to make. Yes. Tell me about the positive things, Rose. Uh -huh. Yeah. What challenges did you face that, you know, made you think otherwise? Well, planning? Yeah. Uh, you see, this thing was beyond me. Yeah. And I could not afford it. So when I saw like I'm not getting the support I need, there's actually one particular, two particular rejections I experienced and I didn't see them coming. They, they offset me. And at some point I contemplated changing it. It's a, I did, uh, postponing yeah. this event. Yes. It's my husband who said we cannot postpone it we have because this thing going. is eating our minds. Let's do it the way we'll do it. And then... Uh, we know what happened. How did you manage to pull the mass media university into your, you know, your project? Yeah, a friend. First of all, I, I had looked for a venue for two and a half months, mm -hmm. and every time I would approach an institution and tell them I'm doing this, they would see a money making opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's actually one institution that charged me almost a million to do to use the laboratory. Yeah, to do the event, because it's not just the lab. Yeah. We would use the parking, we would use their toilets, we would use their hall to feed from. We would use their auditorium where we would contain the public that comes to view the event. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them, why don't you just let me do this here and see how the name of your school will be mentioned all over, all over the world. Anyway, so a friend of mine mentioned to me, okay, our church is in Rongai, mm -hmm. Harvest Family Church. Yeah. And I live in Langata. So every time I'm going to church, I pass right outside multimedia. But it never occurred to me that I can do this event in multimedia. Mm -hmm. First of all, being a government institution, institution, yeah. I didn't know how I would penetrate until I get permission. Mm -hmm. You know, there's this idea about government institutions so that protocols. they are impenetrable. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So my friend uh, suggested, actually the lady who, who did catering, her name is Melody. She suggested to me one evening, we were just right there outside church and she told me, why don't you do this event in NMU? I told her, really? And you know, in my head, like I thought I, I'm supposed to do this event in a very new and a very modernized institution. So you're you looking know? of glam. Yeah, you know, a the nice glam, building. the cup rose, the yes. whatever. Yeah. She, and then when she told me, because I was desperate, I told her, we can go and check. Like Actually, going to check MMU was because I didn't want to disappoint her. And look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I didn't want to disappoint her. So we went on January yeah. 9th, I think. Mm -hmm. And we met a very, very supportive chair of department, Dr. Eric Njogu. And the moment we mentioned the idea to him, he bought it. He was game. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went ahead to select and identify the students that are going to yes. take part in yes. that, you yes. know. Tell me how was the casting. I want to call it casting because mm -hmm. you can't just go out and be like, hey, mm -hmm. 10 of you or 20 of you come over, let's yes, do this. Yeah. Yes. So how did the process go for you? 
Okay, so I gave uh, Dr. Eric Njogu my specifications, yeah. and he got me his chemistry students from MNU. Wow. He briefed them about what is expected. Number one, he told them this is a voluntary opportunity. So there's no pay. Yeah. yeah. You may gain something, but you may live there with nothing. So they agreed. So the ones who agreed, we took them, like I think 10 of them. Then a few came from my church. I was given an opportunity to make an announcement during the youth yeah. service. Yeah, you know you're the pastor's wife. Pastor's wife, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, I, I, I announced uh, that uh, I'm doing this and I need volunteers, so I got a few to volunteer. Yeah. Then I also announced on my social media. Yeah, and that's how my class became full. So, so many had registered, I think, like 30-something. Yeah. But as we approached the event, they kept People on... People are dropping off. Eh, hey, wakaogopa, wengine wakaogopa. Like, when I told them, you know, you'll have to be awake for over 60 hours. Yes. Yeah. Wow. What is it that you are looking forward for this whole day to go live? Because mm -hmm. there is so much to do with your adversity quotient, which you had to prepare for. Mm -hmm. Because you are telling me you needed to, to train your body to know that it needs to stay awake that long. Mm -hmm. You need to train your body to know that you need to dress up and, you know, prepare mm. for this long. Mm -hmm. So when, at what point did you start, you know, dealing with your adversity quotient, basically? I started in December last year. Yes. Mm -hmm. The first time I tried uh, staying for 24 hours without sleeping, I, I tried doing it at home and it backfired. My husband entered the house at around 11 p.m. and found me already asleep. Mm -hmm. And it's 11 p.m. 11. And I'm supposed to stay awake until the next day. And yeah. he told me, Oi, just please well, go to bed. Yeah. Go and sleep. <laughs> You've already spoiled the, the, the whole thing. You've already slept. <laughs> so uh, that was my first attempt. Yeah. We laugh about it to date, but uh, anyway. Yeah. It was the first step I mm -hmm. tried. Mm -hmm. So the next, um, the next endurance I did was for 24 hours, yeah. which I did at work. I woke up on a Tuesday morning, went to work, carried clothes for the next day. And in the evening, I put my children in the school van and they came home and they left me at work. I spent the night in the office alone. Only Working. that in this case, mm -hmm. not teaching. Yeah, not teaching. Yeah, but for me, I didn't need to rehearse teaching yeah, because yeah. I've been teaching for over a decade. Mm -hmm. Even now, if you tell me to teach you uh, structure and bonding. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time, Rose. Asante. I know we would have spoken and spoken all day long. Yeah, yeah. But I really appreciate that you created time for mm -hmm. me today. Yes. And while you keep breaking records, mm -hmm. I'm just going to be here to cheer you. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to keep warm. Oh, wow. Even while you break the records. Oh, wow. So put it on. Oh. Let me see if it fits. Wow. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It you deserve, deserve better. This. You deserve more. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You deserve more. How are st your students reacting? Mm -hmm. How are they responding? I've watched mm -hmm. bits of what was going on. <laughs> yes. People yawning and doing all sorts of things. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. How are you ensuring ah, that things... The stories are just incredible. I know. <laughs> tell me. Give me all the juiciness because uh, I'm tempted to step out. But yes. I also don't want to step uh -huh. out. Yeah. Because I feel like I want to keep staying with you and just talking mm -hmm. about this over and over. So fill me yes. in. Wow. The first day they were excited yes. when we started the lesson. Uh, the first night, nobody slept, nobody was yawning. Even, and then you know what happens is, when the sun comes up, sleep goes, because uh, there's a sleep hormone. So when the sun comes up, that's why you wake up when the sun comes up, because the sleep hormone diminishes. And that's why at night, you automatically become sleepy, because the darkness comes with now, the body adjusts and start, starts producing that sleep hormone. Yeah. So during the day, I didn't struggle much with my students. But the second night, but I had prepared them. Yes. I told them the second night will be bad. Yes. It will be crazy. Mm -hmm. Ah, my students, they struggled. They really struggled, but they made it. I found one writing while her eyes were closed. Like I'm dictating notes and she's writing. With her eyes closed. But what I loved about those children yeah. is that they were very determined to stay with me to the end. No one dropped off. No one dropped off. No there's one, one felt sick. There's one who, when he gets overwhelmed with sleep, yeah. he would just go to the sink because and in wash a lab their we face. have sinks. Yeah. And wash his face. There's another one who would spend even almost two hours standing so that the sleep can go. 
and you know we were not taking coffee we were not taking coffee and we were not taking any energy drink like red bull we are mm. not allowed and we decided we, we need to be as natural as possible yes yeah yeah so we were in our natural element so the second night was quite a struggle what i loved about it is that we, we didn't feel cold that's what i really thank god for because i was afraid for those children you know to me they are children because i'm like 15 years older than them i know and yeah. also where the location is the location. is meant to be very cold mm. you know i hear that that's LA is really cold yeah yeah and then you know we were sitting on the high wooden stools with no nowhere to lean yeah on. no backrest let me tell you it yeah. was really an endurance but god saw us through god saw us what through. did your husband have to say about that he's amazed till now he's amazed he said he's proud of me and uh, i'm glad he is what about yourself how do you feel about yourself um i'm having thoughts of gratefulness i'm grateful to god that he helped me do this when i look back i don't know how i stood for 62 hours um on the first day st john's ambulance are the ones who sponsored the medical services yeah when they t- did triage on me because they are supposed to do triage during yeah. the breaks yeah during the breaks yeah. or any time they feel there is a need on the first day the pressure was high and uh, they told me go and relax before i even started the attempt my blood pressure was high and they said probably it's because you've been up and down since morning yeah. and all that and probably anticipating so i thought that as, as i thought the pressure will calm down mm mm-hmm. So on the first night my legs out of nowhere they started aching and it was severe pain and I can't stop you already started you already done like 7 hours yes you can't stop I can't stop yeah so I taught that lesson with pain on my feet yeah. and my legs and with high pressure as at Thursday the pressure was almost 160 it's supposed to be 130 I guess Yeah wow. so for me I don't think I did it by my own strength as at Wednesday I thought I didn't think my body can handle this up to Friday mm-hmm. I was starting to doubt but I I didn't verbalize it I'm very careful I rarely say ne- ne- anything negative, negative by the way yeah. even if this jumper was 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 bad I would not say it there's something about the Guinness you know record mm-hmm. you know reviewing your record evidence yes, yes. and evidence and mm-hmm. all of that mm-hmm. are you aware for how long they're going to review your evidence and when they're going to give okay back to you mm. the title mm. officially okay yeah so first of all yeah organizing that evidence will take us over one week we have the evidence raw i don't think it can take less than a week then uh, i have to scan i wrote a i wrote a workbook yes I wrote our, the yeah. workbook we were using mm-hmm. I'm the one who compiled it yeah. a 200 pages workbook. workbook yeah so we have to remove the the binding yes and scan 10 samples because I was supposed to have a minimum of 10 students scan them into PDFs upload scan the exams we did 10 of them again into PDFs upload you got you taught and then they sat exams yes they did an exam of of one and a half hours wow mm. wow they did an exam of one and a half hours so scan sent page by page yeah scan yeah. so like an exam if it's your exam mm-hmm. we scan it and then it's one pdf document so we'll have 10 pdf documents for the exam yeah 10 pdf documents for the for the workbook and then all the independent witness statements which yes. are like 40 mm-hmm. and then timekeeper statements which are like 40 then the photograph evidence cover letter and video evidence so that's why i'm saying organizing that evidence will take over we'll a take, week yeah actually it may take two weeks. close to a month yeah yeah then after that now after we upload we are supposed to pay we are supposed to pay around 1500 dollars 1000 to 1500 dollars yeah for them to review our evidence yes that's almost 200000 now we pay then they review our evidence and give us feedback in 10 working days yeah so i don't think we'll get feedback before april but 
let's see how 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 let's Please see go. how it goes mm. when you get when you get the when you become the official record mm -hmm. holder mm -hmm. what are you entitled to mm -hmm. yeah nothing nothing because uh, Guinness World Record first of all they do not pay you no they don't yeah they don't if your country decides to appreciate you that's okay but what it gives you is a global platform it gives you influence now that influence is what can probably earn you something you'll have the name you'll have an opportunity to make an impact you'll be a consultant for maybe maybe sci many science uh, bodies and that's what i'm looking at yeah uh, i'm looking at being a trainer a motivator of teachers so the fact that you're a record holder there are no monetary benefits that come, that with, come it, with it but you get the influence and for me that's the inf i was looking for the influence yeah because we, we can do other things and get money but why go this direction thank you rose <laughs> this is official thank you yeah. and thanks so thank much you. for your time you. i really appreciate it quite inspiring indeed i hope you learned something from rose's story many thanks for watching the show today and make sure you join us again next saturday at 8 30 pm kenyan time only on ktn news and if you have a story you'd like to share with us please don't hesitate write to us through globe traction at standardmedia.co.ke or dm us on our social media platforms at globe traction you can also tap that follow button to me on my social media platforms at Pasil Telewa on Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok and YouTube for more behind the scenes and many other amazing stories. But until then, I hope to catch up with you again soon, same time, same place. Bye bye for now.